Good morning! As I've been by this forest all around me, I'm no longer in Iceland, but I have a few other things to say about Iceland, Icelandic travel, so I'm gonna keep this going even though we're not there. So I'm back in the Olympic Peninsula, on the Olympic Peninsula, just outside of Olympic National Park, and uh, as you can see, it's friggin' gorgeous. And this isn't even in the park. I wouldn't say this tree behind me is a baby, but in the heart of the park, we got we got even we got even bigger ones. Um, this is, in case you're interested, a Douglas fir, and it's pretty tall. So, before I finish off the series of Icelandic language videos, I wanted to talk about travel, specifically about Iceland, but travel in general. For context, with travel in Iceland, Iceland got hit harder by the financial crisis in 2008 than most countries. It really tanked, and I don't have enough knowledge or time to explain why or the consequences. I'm just gonna say it was bad. And one of the principal reasons that it's not so bad right now is because of tourism. Around 2011, 2012 is when tourism really exploded in Iceland, and now the tourism figures are still growing, but also just bananas high. For context, Iceland has a population of about 320,000, and they're getting over a million tourists a year. That's a lot, and they haven't built up the infrastructure slowly. They've had to just kind of explode this infrastructure out of nowhere, and they've done a pretty admirable job. At the moment, economically, they're doing in great, they're, they're, in, they're in great shape considering where they were just eight years ago. However, and I'm going to steal my, my, uh, my, my relative Einar's words here and say, there's no such thing as a free lunch. The lunch in this, uh, in, the, in this situation being the economic improvement. The cost has been the people. And I don't mean that in a derogatory sense, just that that's a lot of people, and Iceland has never dealt with this. Places that Icelanders used to go as Icelanders, they can no longer go to because it's just become this giant tourism machine, and it costs all this money, and there are too many people. But again, they're getting a lunch, so overall, it's a positive thing. I just wanted to talk about travel and tourism to, I guess, caution? and advise people who might be looking to travel to Iceland and other places. Number one, first and foremost, be considerate. Know that this is not your country, and you're in a country that hasn't historically had a huge number of tourists. You know, this isn't, this isn't Paris, a place where people have, have traveled to in large numbers for a long time, and they have the infrastructure and, and the history to support this. Icelanders aren't accustomed to it, so just, yeah. Two, if you're not sure about whether or not you should or can do something, ask someone. If you're not sure about where you can hike or you can't hike, how to handle certain things, ask someone. I guarantee you they'll be pleasant and happy and love to talk to you, but don't just do, ask if you aren't sure. Three, make an effort to show that you care about the country you're in. I'm not saying you have to become fluent in Icelandic or whatever language, but seriously, learning good morning and thank you go a long way because it shows you care. It shows you're not just showing up to take advantage of the people and, and leave without ever showing any sort of interest in their country, their culture. Seriously hello, thank you, goodbye, you'll see it on people's faces. It means a lot. It really, really does. Okay, so now that I've gone a little preachy, I want to pull this back and add some thoughts on why I think this phenomenon of the ignorant or inconsiderate tourist comes from, and why you and I and all of us are susceptible to it. Let's imagine, if you will, that you grew up in a city. In a city, generally speaking, if you can't go somewhere, if something is off limits, there will be signs, often physical barriers, that prevent you from going there. And after living an entire life, or a good part of a life in an area like that, your brain kind of develops this 
software to make these decisions without you having to think about it. So without having to go somewhere and reading a sign and say, ah, I cannot go in there, you see all these subtle clues that allow you to kind of behind the scenes make the decision, I should go in there. Now you go outside of the city and compound that with a country you've never been to, like Iceland, and they might not have those things. It is not that you're stupid. It's not that you go somewhere and go, huh, well, I don't see any signs that say don't go in there, so I'm gonna go in there. It's that your brain is making these decisions behind the scenes. Your brain isn't getting the same information that says off limits. So you kind of make this subconscious decision, it must be on limits. Again, it's not that you made the decision, it's okay. It's that there wasn't anything to kind of subconsciously tick or hint, hint to you that you can't. So you do it. We live our entire lives with these subtle bits of information and decisions that we make behind the scenes without our conscious brain ever making them. And when we're in an area we're familiar with, this is a good thing. This allows us to function in a complex society where we have a lot of information coming in without being overwhelmed. We can make all of these small inconsequential decisions behind the scenes and we can use our conscious brains to make more important decisions. But when we're removed from the familiar situations, this can cause problems. And I bring all of this up to give context to the situation because I hear all too often a dismissal of these sorts of behaviors as the cause of people being stupid or people being mean-spirited. And I think this is a wrong way to, to picture this problem on two fronts. One, it just generally encourages the othering of people and considering yourself separate from other people, and I'm not a fan of that. But more importantly, two, Nobody thinks they're stupid. Nobody goes around thinking like, I'm an idiot. What would an idiot do so I can avoid doing things idiots do? People all think they're competent. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but when you dismiss inconsiderate actions as just the product of people being stupid, then you've essentially shut yourself off from ever considering that you yourself might be making inconsiderate actions. Because you do, because we all do. But if you consider the inconsiderate behaviors of other people as just being the products of mistakes of honest people, then you, are, then you can consider yourself also open to these sorts of mistakes. And that's okay. The important thing is that you consider that you might be making them, so that you can reflect on that and hopefully not make them. So, next time you go travel, consider your actions. When, when you see other people doing things that might not be great, don't dismiss it. Don't look at those examples and go, wow, look at that idiot. Look at those examples and go, huh, I wonder what led them to act that way. What impulses in their life have led them to think that was a good decision? What are some actions I might be making that I might not realize are inconsiderate? I'm making this video here both because it's beautiful, but because I also kind of want to make a bring it back I also kind of want to bring it back to home in the sense that I really care about our national parks and because I grew up here specifically owned by the national park it makes me really sad when I go hiking especially my favorite places and see garbage and see people walking off of trails taking things out of the forest and generally treating things in a way that I don't think it should be treated but I also acknowledge that this is not because people are mean or jerks or stupid. It's just that they don't know, and that's okay. But you should be making the, the you should be making the effort to learn so that you don't make these mistakes. Because I want people to come here. I want people to experience places like this. They should. It makes us better people. But it I, I think it always requires a level of humility and introspection and reflection when we do. Um, hopefully this hasn't been too preachy, I didn't mean it that way. Hopefully it's been informative and given you something to think about, especially the next time you may travel to Iceland or anywhere else. Um, stay tuned for a little more on Icelandic. Thanks.